from the Bakersfield, California. This is the Renegade Report. Welcome to this edition of the Renegade Report with Kenny Calvin, the last of the Bowser Boys, first of the Grider Group, and the former general in Chudy's Army. Yes, I say it every week. Welcome. And today we have the fearless leader, Coach Sandy Taylor. How you doing, ma'am? I'm great. How are you, Kenny? Actually having some time to get <laughs> fresher, so I got my Renegade Red on today. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for that pin that Brandon Urie said we need to add to this. So. Yes, I have that. We can make that happen. All He's right, looking Coach. pretty sharp, but that'll add to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach. Well, hey, you know, I always talk about the, the honor that I have to be in this position. Uh, you have faith in, uh, in me in the process from the play-by-play -play standpoint. And the transition into this has been an honor and a dream come true. So I appreciate you for that, Coach. You know what, Kenny, it's been my pleasure, and I love your enthusiasm, and um, I, I feel you because every day it's an honor to be the athletic director of Bakersfield College, and even more so right now when we're going into the playoffs and all the things that are happening, it just is, uh, you know, it's a blessing to be a part of a program with such rich traditions. So. Absolutely. So, you know, we talked about playoffs, so let's let's do somewhat of a yearly recap of some of the programs. Any programs that you want to highlight as far as uh, our athletic programs and where they finished the season as, you know, far, as we entered this last week? Yeah, I was just at the state golf championship and Allie Crawley finished uh, 16th in the state, okay. which is a really good finish. Um, Allie's a Dean's List student, so she's a very good student. Um, enjoy watching her compete. Coach Jackie uh, Servadillo did a great job. Um, so that was fun. Men's soccer just missed out on the playoffs, and ah. I know they were a little disappointed, but it came down to the wire. I, he was playing for a conference championship in the last game, and just they just missed. So, you know, they did a good job. Coach Martinez, he's he's incredible. He's doing a wonderful job. Coach um, has done a wonderful job. Yeah. Wrestling, those guys wrestling's compete. still still going right. They they don't uh, they finished second in their conference tournament, but they have a duel tonight and a tournament this weekend before they go into regionals. Um, well, women's volleyball, we'll find out today oh, who wow. we're playing, but they're having a great season, and we look forward to that. We should be home on the 20th, um, so more details to follow with that. But, you know, it, it just has been a phenomenal fall. Absolutely. Just fun. Absolutely. W women's soccer plays today at 2 o'clock out at the Kern County Soccer Park in their playoff game, so we're very excited about that against uh, Golden West. So uh, it's been exciting. Well, I always like to highlight the fact that, you know, we have the stereotype of us being this football school, and that's all we care about, or care about, I should say. But more than anything, our other programs continue to compete at the highest of the highest levels. Uh, Coach Ferrer and the volleyball team just continuing to excel, coming off a great year last year, having an opportunity to win the outright state championship for the conference uh, versus Canyons last week. Uh, when we got up to Canyons for our football broadcast, I met with the uh, sports information director and he giggled about showing up late and how that might have cost them the game. <laughs> and, you know, just just having the opportunity to reciprocate what it means to be part of this process overall as a media professional, being the football guy is something special and just it's just a continued testament of how well we're doing overall. So let's transition into what's coming for football. You know, we had the tough week where we were, you know, great half of football. Looked like we were going to come away with that. You were our guest for halftime. I had another one of my teammates up for halftime. And then after the half, you know, we give up 21 straight points and turns into a whole totally different game playing the number one team in the state, right? Well, definitely two halves to that game. But, you know, you knew they were going to come out after halftime and make some adjustments. Definitely and knew it. We just couldn't sustain the storm, right? They just um, – we couldn't weather that storm ah, and get through it. And, um, you know, but it was a good football game. College of the Canyons played exceptionally well in the second half. I thought our guys played exceptionally well in the first half. Yes, we did. But, again, playing for a conference championship and to have all of our fall sports playing – in the mix that last week is, you know, that's what we want to compete for is championships. So proud of them, proud of the football team. And Absolutely. the game plan they put together for that Canyons game was phenomenal. We just could not sustain their talent at that second half. 
And one of the things I said, it's a reason that they're a number one seeded team. You know, they came out, they didn't have a great half. They had two turnovers that led to scores for us, put us in a position to go up 10. However, there's a reason that they're the number one team in the state. Whatever they did in that <laughs> locker room, they came back out focused. Nothing to take away from our guys because I definitely appreciated the fact that we did come out and play with passion from the beginning. You know, we'll have Coach Chudy on later in the show, hopefully. And one of the things he talked about early in the year was getting better every week. Right. So every week, that was the mantra that I had in my head as far as the team. As long as we continue to get better, we feel better about ourselves. And that's what we did, truthfully, even though we didn't come away with the win in the last game. So, so let's talk about how important it is to continue to have the character, even when things are going wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so Coach, let's, let's, let's hit on that a little bit from what you've seen as far as the programs who didn't have that finish that they want and just the attitude of the players and coaches. You know, um, when you compete in athletics, you have to be able to understand that you're not always going to win. But being better – today than you were yesterday is the key, right? And Absolutely. recognizing what your role is and what your responsibility is. And I think that our athletic department does a phenomenal job having a high expectation, but a realistic one as well. I mean, we've talked about it in our other personal lives and things that Absolutely. are going on, but you know, these kids have a lot that they're dealing with. They're students, they're dealing with their schoolwork. Uh, homework. Some of them have to work full-time jobs. Talked um, about that often. Yeah, you set the expectation to perform at your best, and you leave it all on the field or on the court or wherever you are, and you walk away with your head held high. And I'm I'm proud of our department for that. Well, well, coach, I'm glad you said that because that message translates over into our personal lives, right? You know, as athletes, we go through these experiences where we work our tails off to be the champion, to be the winner, to make playoffs. And unfortunately, it doesn't always happen like that. Well, don't you get stronger through adversity? Absolutely. And, uh, if everything came easy to us, I don't think we would be the people that we are. You have to learn to work for it, uh, appreciate <laughs> the value of the hard work and put it in. And then if you put it all in and you leave it out there, uh, you know, you can't be less than proud of yourself for leaving it all there. Co Coach, words to live by, <laughs> especially personally for me as I go through this transition sure. and seeking uh, full-time media broadcast professional work. You know, right. so, so thinking about that and how it transitions or transcends to everything else that's going on, we just talked about that with my son who's in the Army and mm -hmm. how, how frustrating the experience is for him and how we just talked about sometimes bringing out the best of you means that you have to strip away all the old you yep. to become the best version of yourself. Well, and that's sort of, you know, you hear the mantras about in athletics, you got to get buy-in and you got to get people to get on board with the philosophy. That's sort of what that is, right? Breaking it down and building Absolutely. it back up. And all these students come from uh, to us with different experiences and life experiences, but athletic experiences. And it takes some time for that to gel and get everybody on the same page. Um, and that's why it's so important that we get better, you know, from one day to the next day. And as long as you're showing improvement and you're getting better and you understand that there's something bigger than yourself, then we've met our, our goal, right? That, I mean, yeah. really, that that's the American dream and, <laughs> and should be the goal of every person that wakes up and opens their eyes <laughs> to get better and be a better version of yourself than you were yesterday. And as Coach Carl always says, we have the worst vision of ourself that anybody else has. So sometimes we're more critical or more blow our own horn. But uh, the truth of the matter is we have the worst view of ourselves. So it's important that we look outside and have people evaluate and assess and True. help us to get better all the time. All right. So, so Coach, you said one phrase that, that kind of stuck with me stripping everything down to become a better version. So can we talk about what's to come for Memorial Stadium <laughs> and what's, what's expected to happen in the future as far as things that are happening on campus? So just, just to give a little bit of insight to some of the things that are going to improve as some things are stripped away. Well, it's definitely going to improve. Um, so the plan right now, we don't have a timeline yet, but we're working on a plan to put in a new, entirely new track, new synthetic turf, um, a brand new scoreboard, huge scoreboard. Wow. Going from natural grass to synthetic turf is a big deal. Um, and so we want to make sure we get all our eyes 
dotted and our T's crossed, but um, we just want to take it to the next level in that facility. And so the first phase will be the lower part. The second phase, we'll talk about, you know, restrooms and lighting and concessions and uh, press box, all that sort of thing. So getting a nice little facelift to the amenities to Memorial Stadium. Beautiful. Yeah, it, it's going to be phenomenal. And then the new gym complex wow. that will include, you know, field houses and different things like that. That's, that's going and we'll start design hopefully in the spring. So by 2022... That whole area is not wow. even going to look like the same place. But neither is Bakersfield College. There's going to be a lot of changes on campus. So it's very exciting, a lot of busy stuff, a lot of work, um, but it'll be worth it in the end. Well, Coach, all hands on deck. <laughs> new stadium or new track, Yeah. new synthetic turf, new scoreboard, and then we're going to work our way up to start improving the actual infrastructure of the stadium all the way from bottom to the top. I'm excited. Well, and the, the beauty of that is is that we limit the amount of time that we're out of Memorial Stadium if we do it in two phases. So we want to make sure we do the lower part where we can get our student athletes back in there, whether it be track or football, back in there as soon as we can. So it's the least amount of disruption for our students. That's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, really, even to hear that happening for me is like, wow. You know, as a former player, you know, I'm a third generation. Well, Second generation renegade. My, my uncle and dad were renegades. But as a professional player, coach, and now media professional, this is one of the most humbling and grateful experiences that I can be part of just seeing the process happen. Well, we're going to be able to host a lot of events in there because we don't have to worry about the damage done to the grass, right? Absolutely. And so some of our restrictions have been based on natural grass. However... We do know that it's a difference, and I prefer, as a coach myself, natural grass. However, we definitely need to be able to host more events and to sustain the maintenance, and, you know, it's always going to be the same playing surface, so we're very excited about it. That's going to be exciting, and it also opens up the opportunity for us to host these huge high school football games like That's we right. used to when I was a player. You know, I have a memory of playing in front of 27,000 when we played against Foothill you know, when there was the great 7-0 and 7-0 and battles in 94 and 95 or 93 and 94, whatever those years were. Yeah. Oh, I'm dating myself. 92, <laughs> 93, 93, 94. But some of the frustration from some of my teammates in different former guys that are locally now, why don't we play these huge games in the stadium? But you just hit the nail on the head with the surface not being able to sustain that many feet. <laughs> well, part of, part of it is that. The other part is these high schools have phenomenal stadiums, yes, and they, they have their own home field advantage that they don't want to give up. And so I appreciate that and respect that. But whether it be CIF playoffs, whether it be the state 3C2A playoffs, which um, – 2019 2020 we're going to host at this point wow um so that's pretty exciting whether we're in the football game or not we're going to host the state championship so i mean it's just opens the door to so many things the scoreboard is going to be phenomenal the oh, video I can't wait. scoreboard jumbotron oh oh my goodness it's just i can't be wait beautiful. Coach. so it just raises the level right just as we talked about getting better as student athletes we want to get better as a department as well and so facilities is a huge thing and that's what we're going to try to keep working on. Well, you know, we talked about sports. Let's switch focus to students. You know, we have some amazing things coming on campus for student life, student athlete life. And uh, just, just watching some of the things that have happened. What's some of the most recent student facilities we've added? So they just did the groundbreaking for the Veterans Resource Center, wow. um, which is phenomenal. So that construction is going to start right now. The cafeteria is moving to the huddle okay. of the gym, which is a throwback. That's what it was designed for. In 1956, they used the huddle wow. as the cafeteria. So that's all happening right now. And, and it'll go the STEM building, science and engineering building is going to go, the ABC building, which is admin, business services, cafeteria, all that area is going to be redone. Okay. So those are the things that are happening at as well as we're planning the gym at the same time. So it's going to go right in order. And hopefully <sighs> hopefully everything just runs like it's supposed to and we, we have our new gym, you know, open up in the fall of what is it, uh, 2022? 20, 2022? Mm -hmm. oh, well, music to my ears, Coach. Yeah, and we want that gym to be state-of-the-art, right? It needs to be a focal point just like Memorial Stadium is. 
softball baseball facilities are phenomenal. We want that to be a focal point and, and host possibly host some big events in there. Absolutely. Host more big events. Keep some of our local athletes and students from going to these other campuses down south, up north, <laughs> wherever they're going. Back east, you need to stay home at the Palace on Panorama, the Harvard <laughs> on the Hill, the Mansion on the Mountain, Bakersfield College. So, Coach Taylor, you know, I always talk to you about different things. I'll text you out of the blue just telling you how grateful I am for the opportunity. But more than anything, proud to see you continue the excellence that you have as a leader. And I'll follow you to the edge of the earth and jump <laughs> off with you. I appreciate you, Kenny. And I love those text messages. Sometimes you don't hear it enough. So thank uh, you very much. Uh, all right. Well, I appreciate you. Well, hey, this is Kenny Calvin. We'll be right back after the break with John, the medicine man, Metis. <laughs> He hates that name, but hey, VP gave it to him, and now it's stuck, and he hasn't told us to stop calling him because he might like it a little bit when we're not around. We'll be right back after the break. Buying a pre-owned vehicle from an online company can be risky, especially if the vehicle is not seen in person before the purchase. At Freeway Chevrolet, we want you to search and compare the inventory on our website, but then come in to the dealership and test drive our vehicles. Let us take the risk out of your buying experience. Buy from the dealer you trust, and when you step up to certified pre-owned, confidence comes standard. A 172-point inspection and reconditioning along with two factory-backed limited warranties and roadside assistance add up to a value you can depend on. And a vehicle you can trust from Freeway Chevrolet, your hometown dealership. It's hard to think about winter with the leaves and pumpkins laying about, but it won't be fall forever, so swing by the fall tire sale at Les Schwab through October 31st. The sale may be seasonal, but our service is here forever. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing matters. W.A. Thompson Distributing proudly supports Bakersfield College Athletics. W.A. Thompson has been delivering quality beverage products to Kern County businesses for over 60 years. With great beer comes great responsibility. Please enjoy our products responsibly and always remember, 21 means 21. W.A. Thompson Distributing salutes BC football. Thanks for following the Renegades on the radio and go Gates! Rabobank delivers banking and financing for businesses grounded in agriculture, helping our customers learn from our knowledge, utilize our resources, and connect with our networks. It's all part of providing the right financial solutions at the right time. Because you work the land, we work for you. We're Rabobank. Let's talk. Work hard is what you've heard your whole life. Why not work smarter? Chevy trucks are ready when you are. Ready to load, haul, and get you around town in style. It starts here at Freeway Chevrolet. Come in this month for truck deals that are big. Save over $10,500 on a 2018 Silverado or get a brand new 2019 Colorado for under $22,000. All this and more can always be found at Freeway Chevrolet and FreewayChevrolet.com. Selection, savings, and service at your hometown dealership. Buying a pre-owned vehicle from an online company can be risky, especially if the vehicle is not seen in person before the purchase. At Freeway Chevrolet, we want you to search and compare the inventory on our website, but then come in to the dealership and test drive our vehicles. Let us take the risk out of your buying experience. Buy from the dealer you trust, and when you step up to certified pre-owned, confidence comes standard. A 172-point inspection and reconditioning along with two factory-backed limited warranties and roadside assistance add up to a value you can depend on. And a vehicle you can trust from Freeway Chevrolet, your hometown dealership. It's hard to think about winter with the leaves and pumpkins laying about, but it won't be fall forever. So swing by the fall tire sale at Les Schwab through October 31st. The sale may be seasonal, but our service is here forever. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing matters.